Finger Picking 8 Exercises for the Troubled Heart by Sad Fantasy Because the next tune we'll be learning might have some techniques that you might not be familiar with. This tutorial is exercises to prepare you for that tune so that you'll learn these techniques and when we come to learning the tune it'll be then relatively easy. Hopefully you already know all the chords we'll be using in these exercises and in the tune but if not pause the video here and just revise them. Don't worry about the G6, we'll look at that later. You'll almost definitely need the tab in order to follow these exercises and you will definitely need the tab to follow the tune and you can find the tab at ebooksforguitar.com and it's available to view online there free. You'll find the link below in the description. Exercise 1 and 2 are learning the finger picking patterns. So, let's continue. Exercise 1 The first finger picking pattern we'll have a look at is primary, index, middle, annular, middle, index, middle, index. And we haven't had a look at this pattern before. So, let's just try that finger picking pattern a few times with an A minor. For this tutorial, I'll have the metronome set at 120 beats per minute. Here that is again and if you can try playing along with it otherwise just try practicing it. Once you feel reasonably happy playing the finger picking pattern, you can move on to try the rest of the exercise. Before we go any further with this exercise, let's just have a quick look at the G6. Now, in the actual tune, we'll be using two G6s, but the one for this exercise can be played with literally one finger. And here's what it looks like. We just place the third finger in the third fret of the bottom E string and the reason we use a third finger is so it's easier to get between this chord and the other chords we need to get to. Right, here's what exercise one sounds like. Let's see and hear that played again. And this time, if you feel you can, try playing along with it. But if not, don't worry about it. Try practicing it first without any backing. And then once you get it to a reasonable speed, you can try playing along.
Once you think you understand exercise 1 and you feel you can play it okay, move on to exercise 2. Exercise 2. Introducing pinches. If you look at the first bar of exercise 2, which is a C, you'll notice that the first note is two notes together. And if you look at the fingers above the score, you'll notice that the primary and the annular are being played together. And this is being denoted by the brackets over the top. So what you're doing is pinching the two strings at the same time. And this is what it looks like. Here it is again, but try playing along with it if you can. However, it is important you use the correct fingers, otherwise the rest of the finger picking pattern won't fall into place. Once you can pinch those two notes, you'll notice the rest of the finger picking pattern is the same as the previous finger picking pattern you've done. So it should sound like this. Try to play this finger picking pattern yourself with the pinch just on the C and practice that over a few times until you feel fairly comfortable with it. You can now try to put exercise 2 together. Here's what it looks and sounds like. Here it is again, but this time, if you feel you can, try playing along with it. But if you can't, don't worry, as usual, go away, practice it, until you get it, till you're reasonably happy with it, and then perhaps you can try playing along with it. Exercise 3. Playing the tune with the annular finger. If you look at this exercise, you'll notice you do a pretty normal finger picking pattern 
P I M A, but then you repeat the annual finger several times to create part of the tune. You then do the same thing with the next chord and so on. So here's what the first two bars look and sound like. You might have noticed that when I play this exercise, I try to maintain as much of the chord shape as I can. And this is to make the whole effect smoother and cleaner, and to save me moving away from a string that I just have to come back to. This is a really useful and fairly simple technique that can really improve the way you sound. But if you want to find out more about it, look at my video on speeding up chord changes. Here's the first two bars again. Try playing along with it. Otherwise, just practice it, but here's what it sounds like. Here's the entire of exercise three. Let's see and hear that done again. Practice exercise 3 until you're reasonably happy with it and then move on to exercise 4. Exercise 4 slides. The last three exercises are very short exercises, either one or two bars. Exercise 4 is two bars. To play exercise 4, firstly play the first fret with the first finger, then play the third fret with the third finger and slide to the 5th fret without re-plucking the string. Next, play the 1st fret again with the 1st finger, and then play it again, but this time slide to the 5th fret again without re-plucking the string. Then you repeat this all again. We know we don't re-pick the string when we're doing the slide because of the slur line over the top, which is the bar. If the slur line wasn't there, we'd have to pick the string twice. However, in this exercise, and in the tune you're preparing for, there is a slur line. So, you pluck the string once, and slide to the next note without re-picking the string. 
Let's see and hear that done a few times. Let's see and hear that again. And if you can, play along with it. Otherwise, practice it. Exercise 5. More slides. In this exercise, we're going to put the slide in the same context as if we were playing the tune. And what we do is we finger pick through an A minor and then slide the first finger to the fifth fret without repicking it. So let's see and hear that done a few times. Let's see and hear that done again. And as usual, if you can, play along with it. Otherwise, you know how it's supposed to look and sound so you can go and practice it. The final exercise, exercise six, pulling off. If you take a look in this exercise, you'll see the one going to a zero with a slur line bar above it and a P. Now, as with the previous exercise, the bar above it or the slur line means you only play the note once. However, so you, it still rings on the open string what you have to do is pluck with your first finger as you're pulling it away from the first fret. So it looks like this. Let's see and hear that played again. Have a play with that technique before you try the exercise. But here's what the exercise looks and sounds like. Let's see and hear that played again. And if you can, try playing along with it. Once you're fairly happy with these exercises, you can move on to the tune now, because if you can play these exercises, the tune will be fairly easy. The link to the tune, as well as to the tab for this exercise, will be down below in the description. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, to like and subscribe so that you can see my future videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.